I might just say something real quick. Make sure you guys are uh, doing the assignment. Uh, we've uh, upgraded, updated Google Classroom, so make sure you're doing your assignment and make sure you take notes today. Thanks, Beth. Okay, week two, level two. We're going to look at geometry today on the X and Y axis. Uh, do some things we've already uh, done in the past, but see how they look with the coordinate system. Uh, the topics under that. The first one, parallel lines and slope. How we tell that lines are parallel in the coordinate system and the slope and, and see uh, what that entails. The steepness and slope, what that means we should know. Uh, the quadratic formula, what's the difference between a line and a quadratic equation? Well, there's a big difference and we should kind of know those. Midpoint, how do you find the midpoint of the line segment? And then a little review from last week's circles, review uh, of what we talked about circles. I want to say this before we get started. I've tried to pick the topics. All of them are hot topics, things that, that you'll see now and in any college as well, whether you just take college algebra or other courses as well. And I hope some of it's review for you and some of it's new. But if, if it seems like it's all new to you, just hang on. When we're halfway through with the course, when I finish the third course of the fourth week, I'm going to do a whole day of reviewing of it and, and look at some uh, topics that we've already covered. So just hang on, keep doing your work, and stay up the best you can. If you have a question, unmute yourself and say something. If I don't answer, Mrs. Jacket or Carissa will uh, phone me and tell me that I need to change my uh, speaker. John, you can hear me good still? Yes, sir. Well, let's get into it then. Let's look at some of these topics. First one is parallel lines and slope. By definition, if, if, if lines are parallel, line one and line two are parallel, that means their slopes have to be parallel. Many times we'll write a line with a script or a block L, and nearly slope always, we write it with M. S is already used for something else in math and physics. So uh, lines are parallel if slopes are equal. And if slopes are equal, lines are parallel. So that goes both ways. And that's just the theorem that we ought to know in geometry. And uh, you can do a lot with lines. Uh, you start seeing that uh, late in grade school or early in middle school, they would just say something like this. This line's parallel to this line. But now then, on the coordinate system, we have two lines, and that slope is two, and this slope is two, we know the lines are parallel. And we know how to do slope at points, it's y minus y over x minus x. That's the formula for slope. Okay. So if we had these lines right here, and it said, which ones are parallel, or any of them parallel? My advice to all of you is to think about the graph, and to think about the graph, it needs to be y equals. Like this one, like this one, and like this one. Now I might think of them on the axis. For example, if I thought of this one on the axis, it's y equals I would think this, y equals 0x plus 3. There was no x, so it has to be 0. So it crosses at 3, and that's a horizontal line. If I thought of this one on the axis, it starts at 4 as the intercept, and has a slope of 2, up 2 and over 1. And you see right there, those lines are not even close uh, to being parallel. Now, there's other things we would ask later on in mathematics, like what's the angle between them, and on and on the questions go. But right now, it's, it's the parallel. And this last one that's y equals, 
That has a slope of negative two and it starts at three. It starts at three and has a negative two slope down two and over one. So those first three lines that were y equal in slope intercept form, none of them were parallel because the slopes weren't equal. Well, let's see if we can go on. My advice to you is to make sure when you look at lines to make it y equals. Notice this one is a unique case. There is no y. So when you have x equals, it's similar to y equals a number, only instead of horizontal, it's a vertical line and it has no slope. So x equals three looks like this. And we still don't have any lines that are parallel. These are perpendicular, but they didn't ask me that. Well, the next thing I would do, I would make them y equals. This one's not y equals. Let's look at this one right here. Let's subtract next to the other side. I have a half of y equals minus x plus three. Still not y equals. I would multiply by two to get rid of the half. I would multiply by two of the x and multiply the three by two. So this one right here, this one, when I make it y equals starts at six, and it has a slope of negative two, down two and over one. Well, I finally found two that had the same slope. This one has a slope of negative two, and this one right here has a slope of negative two. And you can see on the coordinate system, they even look parallel. My graphs aren't great, but I can tell they're parallel. Well, let's take a look at this last one here, this one. Is it y equals? No. So I'm going to make it y equals. I'm going to subtract 6x to the other side, have a minus 3y equals minus 6x plus 7. Get rid of times 3, I'm going to divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3, that's 2x. And divide by negative 3, which is negative 7 thirds. So this one hits at 7 thirds, that's about a negative 2. And it has a positive two slope, up two and over one. And you see these two are parallel as well because they both have a slope of two. This one has a slope of two, and this one has a slope of two. So you can evaluate lines by slope to see if they're parallel. There's a lot of other things you can tell as well. But today, that's the first thing we're looking at. Are lines parallel? And we want to do it by looking at what is the slope. Once the slopes are the same, the steepness is the same, then the lines are parallel in the coordinate system. Okay, next, steepness with slope. Again, we can have uh, several lines listed and say, well, which one is the steepest? Well, I would look at the slope. The bigger the number, as the number gets larger, greater than, the steeper it is. This one has a slope of two. This one has a slope of negative three. Which one's the steepest so far? Well, this one is, even though it's negative. A lot of times I, I see that on the ACT and students will pick the positive number because two is greater than negative three, but on slope, there's a positive two, there's a negative three, and the negative three is a little steeper. Well, let's look at all of them. There's a vertical line. It's so steep, they're so steep, it has no slope. So it's out of the running. This one right here, it's not y equals, so make it y equals. I have minus eight plus two x equals y. Notice I put the y on the right side. It really doesn't make a difference. This one has a slope of two. Oh, this one and this one would have been parallel. They had the same steepness. So, so far, this one's still the steepest. Let's look at this one right here. Put the x on the other side. Subtract x. So the slope is negative one. So negative three is still the steepest. And the last one, let's look at this one right here. 
Uh, I put the x on the other side, so I'm having minus 4y minus x plus 2. Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. And divide by negative 4. This one is the smallest number, so it's the flattest. Well, there it is. Which is the steepest line? It's this one right here. Now, if I wanted to, I could graph all of those on the calculator and look at which was the steepest, and this answer should match. So we've said two things about slope. We can tell if lines are parallel, and we can tell how steep they are, or how flat they are. There's many other things we can tell about slope as well, but those are two very common things that are always asked. Is there a question so far? Okay, let's look at the next item on the list. Let's look at some parallel lines and some questions that might be asked and some properties of parallel lines. When you look at angles, one and three are called vertical angles, and they're always congruent. They always have the same measure. One is an exterior angle, and three is an interior angle. If lines A and B are parallel, there's several different accepted symbols. But the one you see most often is this. You'll have a little arrow on each to show the parallel. The black line, this line right here, is called the transversal. It transverse crosses both of them, like rails on a railroad track. Uh, two and four, those are alternate interior angles. They alternate on the transversal, and they're both on the interior of the, of the lines that are parallel. Names for one and five, those are alternate exterior angles. Three and four, those are same side. Notice they're on the same side, same side interior angles. And you can see a lot of comparisons. Alternate interior angles are always congruent. Two and four would always be the same. If two is 40 degrees, four is going to be 40 degrees. One and two, okay, they're on the same side, one interior, exterior, they form a linear pair. They would be 180 degrees. All of the exterior, they're always congruent. In other words, if one was 130 degrees, five would be 130 degrees. Well, let's see if we can take some of those names and do some problems, answer some questions with them. Okay, let's say it's given. What if angle two is 50 degrees? Angle two is 50 degrees. Well, it looks like it could be 50 degrees. Okay. I immediately know if it's 50 degrees that this is 130 degrees. Notice they form a linear pair. Okay, 180 degrees, a half circle, if you would. Uh, I also know that three, these are vertical angles, that three is 130 degrees. If two is 50, four is 50 degrees. They're alternate interior angles. They're always congruent since these lines are parallel. Five and three would have to be the same. So there's a lot of information from one angle that you can get from parallel lines, and you always Always see one like this on the ACT, always seems to be one. Uh, what about this? What is the value of x? This angle is 2x plus 8. So what is x? Well, that's a little harder. They want you to set up an equation, and anytime you have to set up equations, it seems more difficult, but what they're wanting you to see is this. This angle and this angle should be equal, so the equation that I can set up, I could say that 
the 2x minus 8 equals 130 degrees. Because their alternate interior angles of parallel lines are always congruent. It's just like saying if the slopes are the same, then the lines must be parallel. Well, if the lines are parallel, then it also goes on that alternate interior angles are congruent. I'd add 8 to both sides. 2x equals 138. And divide both sides by 2. X is 69 is the answer. And that's always a real common one I see. They'll give one of the angles in an algebraic term with variables and then ask you to solve for X. So you have to tie in with parallel lines. So questions about that? Questions about that one? All kinds of information you can tell from parallel lines. Okay, quadratic formula. We're going to make a transition from lines to quadratic equations. Notice these are very similar with one exception. If they're quadratic, they have a square term in them. So when they say a quadratic equation, I know it's something that has a, a square in it. Now the reason they're called quadratic with a Q, quad means four, when you factor them, there's usually one, two, three, four terms. That's why they're called quadratics. Because when you look at them a lot of times in the book, this is called a trinomial. Tri has three terms, but usually referred to as quadratic. They look a lot like lines, okay? They look a lot like lines, except for that square term. Well, let's talk about solving. Let's compare and contrast here. If I have a line, I know what they look like, and we start with y equals. Now, many times, instead of y equals, we'll have a zero equals. And to solve a line, we add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So in solving this one, I would say, well, I'll subtract three. And I'll divide 2. So x here would equal negative 1 and a half, negative 3 halves. And that's the answer. But when we look at a quadratic equation, wouldn't think the little square term would make that much difference, but it makes a huge difference. So on that quadratic equation, I could compare how they look. In other words, this one right here, I want to know the intercept is 3, has a slope of 2, up 2 and over 1, it looks like this. However, when I graph a quadratic because of the square term, when I compare them, instead of looking at slope and intercept, when we graph those, I look at the vertex or starting point, and whether it goes up or down, this one goes up, it looks something like this. And I can do that on the calculator as well. But if, if their graphs look different, when I solve them, that's certainly going to be different. And all of you, all of you at this level should probably know how to solve a quadratic. Usually, we want them to equal zero. If that was a five, I'd probably put the five on the other side and make it zero. We're solving, and you could do a lot of different ways. You could factor. You could, you, there's just many different ways. The one that's always asked for, it seems like on the test, is the quadratic formula. And if I'm solving this, instead of adding, subtracting, multiplying here, it seems pretty simple. I have to have a formula for it. And it says, if I have a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, and that's what I have here, a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is negative 12. The formula is this. 
our answer, x, q, whatever it is, but the answer, the answer is equal to this. And it's one formula. It's very, I would compare this to the formula for area of a circle. If I said area of a circle, area, we talked about it last week, area equals pi times radius squared. They would expect you to know that on the ACT. Well, they would expect you to know the quadratic formula as well. And it is. The opposite of B, two numbers, plus or minus, usually, B squared minus 4 times A, C. And the whole thing's all over 2A. So if I was solving this one, this quadratic equation, instead of doing what I did over here with the line, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, if I was using the quadratic formula, I would do what it says to do. B is negative four. So I'm gonna take the opposite of B, that's four. Plus or minus two different numbers, square root. says b squared, b squared, well, b is negative 4, negative 4 squared is 16, minus, says 4, well, that's easy, I'll just write down 4, a is 1, okay, I'm going to multiply 4 times 1, and c, c is negative 12. Now, I was taught to do this, anytime a or c is negative, so of writing the negative, come here and change it. And I aggrandized just what I did there in green, so I knew I changed it. That's negative times negative. And it's all over 2a. Well, a is 1, 1 times 2 is 2. Well, they expect us to be able to do the arithmetic here. So I have 4 plus or minus the square root of. 16 plus. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 12 is 48. I have 4 plus or minus. I have 16 plus 48. 64. All over 2. Now so far I've just been saying plus or minus all the way down. Now I need to break them up. So my answer here, I have 4 plus square root of 64 is 8 over 2, 12 over 2 is 6. So one of my answers to that solution is 6. Then I have 4 minus 8 over 2, and that's negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. Another difference between a first degree and a second degree quadratic Notice I have two answers instead of one. Now, it's always a good idea to check the answers. In other words, say, oh, Mr. B, I, I don't think you're right. I don't think six works. Well, let's end that discussion. Let's try six. Let's go to the green equation and try six right here. Six times six is 36. Four times six is 24. 36. A minus 24, spin 24, spin 12, and spin 36. And that equals zero, so oh, okay, I guess it does work. And both of them should work. Now, not always are there two answers, but usually they are. Usually however many degrees they are, in other words, a third degree might have three, a second degree two, first degree one. So you can see there's a big difference when you're looking at quadratic or second degree equations, and it's something we should be familiar with. And we can look at the coordinate system as well, which we will later on in the course. Let's look in the next item, midpoints. If I did this graph here, 217. And 10, 9. There is a middle point. Now we can do all kinds of things. This is just the beginning. 
That's a bisection. How do I bisect that line segment? What is the midpoint? Uh, we could, if we wanted to, we could say, well, how do you trisect it? In other words, what if I wanted a point that stood in the middle? Well, if I wanted to do trisections. So there's all kinds of questions we can ask. Out uh, here, the start of this is can you do the midpoint? And there's only one of them, fortunately. Well, the equation, if we're going to do it on the coordinate system, back in grade school, we just said, oh, this is half. Whatever this is, this is as well, it's half. Well, here I want the exact point on the coordinate system. And the equation is x minus x over 2 for x. And then it's y minus y over 2 for y. So let's do that. 2 minus 10 over 2. That's x minus x. Excuse me, these are hard me to notes. It's a plus, not a minus. And by the way, when you, this is the reason I like this part of math. When I do this, this answer better look right. It better look right, okay? That's what I like about coordinate geometry. It's going to look right. That's how I caught that error there. It wasn't looking right. It's a plus. $10 and $2 is $12. Over 2 is 6. Let's do the same thing for Y now. 17 plus 9. $17 and $9 is $28. Over 2 is 14. So the answer is 6, 14. And I'm going to say, now does that look right? Yeah, that looks to me like that could be over 6 and up 14. And so the equations for midpoints, they would expect you to know that in geometry as well. And there's a lot of things we could do with that. It's very useful. What I like about it is you can make a rough sketch like I've done here and see what it looks like. It's got to look correct. And that's that's a good thing. It's an easy way to check your answer, I think, anyway. And the next thing on the list. Let's do a little review. Without me telling you anything, on that circle right there, uh, tell me what the center is. The center is, I don't know, some point last week. And tell me what the area is. The area is approximately, I don't know. Without me telling you, do both of those. About another 30 seconds. Hope you can do it in that amount of time. And on the area, let's do approximate area. So don't give me the, the terms in pi, approximate area. Five, four, three, two, one. Did you say the center was at two, negative three? Remember doing that? We want zeros here. Notice it's squared. It has both the x squared and y squared. That's why it's not called a quadratic, okay? It has both of them squared. And didn't ask for it, but the radius is what, four? So the area is pi times radius squared, 16 pi, uh, 50, 26. We agree on 50, around 50, 50, 26. You all good on that? Questions there? Let's go to the classwork for today, the actual sheets that are posted. See if we can work these. Which two lines are parallel? All right, right now you ought to be thinking, 
How, how does he want me to know lines are parallel? Slope. This one's three. This one, got to put the three over, is negative three. This one, if you divide by two, is three. This one, if you divide by three, it's one third. A and C. Answers D. What do you think? See how that worked? So number one would have been D. Let's go to number two and three. We're using the same figure. It says use this figure on questions two and three. Given that the two lines are parallel and angle four is 40 degrees, well, that looks reasonable. So then a measure of angle one will, it says, uh-oh, select all that apply, angle one. Oh. Well, if four is 40, this one's 140 degrees. That's, this has to be 180, a half circle. And these are alternate exterior, so one's 140 degrees. C is correct. Ooh, more than 120 is correct. I would say B and C both work. So there's a case where two of the answers would work. You gotta watch those. And some of the newer tests are doing that now, making where more than one answer works. Well, let's look at number three. Again, the given lines are parallel. And angle four is 40 degrees. Angle three is two X plus 26. What's X? Uh, they want you to see, I think, that this angle three, two X plus 18, has to equal 140 degrees. Is that a first degree equation or is it quadratic? It's first degree. You've got to recognize that as well. There's no squared term. Oh, I add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Subtract 18. 122 equals 2x. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. x is 61. I have a question. Chris has a question. Can anyone Four. hear me? Which line is the steepest? Get your answer there. Give it your best shot. What's your answer, Steve? Let's take about a minute, and then we'll see if we agree or not. I'm Tom Wendell. Can anyone hear me? Is it negative five? Yes, Maybe. we can hear you. In the previous, in the, thank, thank you. In the previous problem, the question of three had a different equation than the, like, little, little graph up top on the line. See, this we missed a lot. A lot of times students will pick the largest positive number. That's incorrect. That is a steep line with a slope of four. But negative five just goes in the opposite direction. The answer is D is the steep. So that's a real steep line. If I looked at it on the axis, if we were doing a trig course, I'd say, okay, give me a slope of negative five. And what is that angle? The slope can tell us the Did angle. you hear what I said? Right now, all they wanted was the steepest. The answer is D. Oh, hold on. Mr. Babcock, can you Use hear us? Use the quadratic formula for the, oh, oh, there's a quadratic equation. Now, it doesn't say it, but it better be equal to zero. If it's equal to Y, we'd want to graph it. Okay? Is it in A, B, C form? It sure is. The opposite of B, plus or minus the square root, B squared minus 4AC, all over 2A. So the opposite of B, three, two answers, plus or minus, B squared, which is going to be nine, negative three times negative three is plus or nine, minus four times A, which is one, times C, which is negative, oh, negative 10, that goes to plus, all over 2A, which is two. Uh, that's 49, that's 40, and 9 is 49, so I had 3, plus or minus 7, square root of 49 is 7 over 2. If I do the plus, 10 over 2 is 5. If I do the minus, 3 dollars spin 7 is a negative 4, 
over 2, which is negative 2. Uh, negative 2 and 5, is that? Yep, it sure is. Answer is D. She's not answering it, though. Yeah, I tried to call as well. Beth, can, they not, can I not hear them again? No. Dang it. I don't know why it does that. Give me one second. It must time out or something. I guess. I don't know. It's irritating. Say something now, Beth. Test, test, test. Yeah, I can hear you now. What was the question that I missed, Beth? Um, I think you need to go back to. I can't. Even, I can't see your screen. Number three. Number three, okay? Is that right, Beth? Number three? Beth? Chris is saying. Well, I can see number five. Number five? The well, you're, question you're is number five. three. You need to go back to number three. Did I miss it? Nope. Oops. Let's take a look at it. The, the equation in the number three question is three equals two X plus 26. And then the equation in the uh, line graph is three equals two X plus 18. Oh. Well, let's do it the other way. Is uh, Chris, if I use 26 instead of 18, is the right answer up there? I didn't do it. Hold on. Oh, come on, Chris. Let's, so we'll, let's do it. 103 <laughs> equals 2x plus 26. Subtract 26. 114 equals 2x. Divide by 2. And that is... And D7. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, so I'm sure that's a typo. So, okay. Sorry, Beth. That answer the question? Yep. Thank you. What's the midpoint of the line segment with these points? Go ahead and do it. Everybody do it. Let's take about 30 seconds. See if you can do it without me telling you. Is answer five negative two? We agree? Nobody agrees with five negative two. Did I do it wrong? It looks right. I agree. And you just add, divide by two, add, divide by two. And that looks like, it looks right. That looks like five negative two. Everybody do the last one. What's the proximate area of that circle? Uh, 
All I ask for is area. Got it? See if I can get it. The radius, it's easy again, Mr. Rawl, all this easy, but the radius is seven. So the area equals pi times seven squared, and that's 49 times three, one, four ish. Uh, that's 50 times three, it's got to be around 150. It's got to be C. It's only one C to close. We agree on C? With, without a calculator, the exact answer would have been. 49 pi. Remember, keep up. Try to get your things in. After next week, we're halfway finished. And the fourth week, I'll stop and do a review of all the different ones and take some old, maybe a little different look at a few of them as well. Any questions? Beth, do you have any comments? Nope, I think I'm good. I have a question. Yes. What was the equation for number five again? Let's look at number five. Let me get it there. The quadratic formula equation is this. Now, if you were in my calculus class, I'd say derive that. Show me why that works. Right now, I'm just saying that works in the red box. Can you use it? And it's derived from completing the square, which is another method. Of solving quadratic equations. It's pretty exciting, huh, Carissa? Just calm down, Carissa. I have many more fun facts about math. Many more. I won't run out. Beth, anything else? I don't have anything. Hey, Beth, I have a question for you. You ready? Sure. The mother dog had her puppies on the street and the policeman saw them and they got a ticket to the, to the mother dog for having her puppies on the street. You know why? No, sir, why? No. It's because she was littering. Come on, Beth, that was a good one. See, when you have okay. your puppies, they're, called, they're so cute, they call them litters, a litter of puppies. Oh, look how cute they are. But no, you can't litter on the street. Beth, you're killing me here. You're just totally just killing me. Any other questions from the group? Chris, do you want to stay on the line for a little bit after I close out? I was gonna let them know, um... I will be at study hall today at one, as well as tomorrow, if anyone wants to try the homework, um, see if they need any help, but I'll be on today at one, as well as tomorrow at one. Well, appreciate that, Carissa. If you have any questions, you can call me as well. John, anything? I'm gonna stop sharing the screen here. Whoa, whoa, quit that. Anything else, boss? You haven't said anything. <laughs> well, I'm gonna stop sharing then and we'll see you next Thursday. Try to keep up with your work. <laughs>